Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal. But before we get started, make sure you go down and subscribe, hit that like, leave me a comment, and most importantly, go over and check out NinjaNerd.org. All of our notes and illustrations are available for you guys to utilize. And if you want some other buddies to study with or topics to talk about, you can also check out our Discord. But now as we wrap up the cranial nerves, we're going to be talking about number 12, hypoglossal, and what is the type. This is a motor type of nerve. And when we go through and we're talking about the motor, this is particularly pertaining to the function of the muscles. So the muscles of the tongue is the important structure functions of the hypoglossal. And as we can look over here, I have written out the muscles that we are going to talk about really quickly and what their functions are so we have a little better understanding of what the whole importance are of the hypoglossal nerve. So we can see here the hypoglossal nucleus as the nerve comes out, goes through the hypoglossal canal, down into underneath the tongue, we have some extrinsic muscles, which are muscles that are not within the tongue, and then we have intrinsic, which are muscles within the tongue that are controlled by the hypoglossal. So as the nerve comes down, it branches off and it hits really three important muscles here that are not within the tongue. And that is the styloglossus, which is this one right here. We have the hyloglossus, which is this one under here. And then we have one in the front here, which you can kind of see it's like this, right? It's pertaining right here and that is called the genioglossus. So these extrinsic muscles have some important functions that work with the hypoglossus or the nerve, hypoglossal nerve helps control. So we have the styloglossus here. We can see that it's kind of this muscle that's pulled up and back. It actually connects to our styloid process. But what we can see is if this muscle were to contract, it's going to pull this tongue back. So it's going to retract the tongue and it's also going to elevate it a little bit. So the styloglossus is going to retract and elevate the tongue. And then we have the hyloglossus. That's this one underneath here. Right, we can see it's underneath the tongue. If this muscle were to contract, it's going to depress and it's also going to retract a little bit. So it's going to pull the tongue back and down. Okay, and then we have our last one, which is our genioglossus. So our genioglossus is here, and this actually helps make the tongue protrude. It's a very odd shape, but when it does, it, it helps the tongue protrude out. So now, we understand that there are some in extrinsic muscles, right? The styloglossus retract, elevate, hyloglossus retract, depress, and the genioglossus helps protrude, which if it makes sense, to me it makes sense, because if you look at the functions, right, we have some that are pulling the tongue back, one that's gonna pull it up, one's gonna pull it down, and one's gonna help get it forward. And then we also have the genioglossus, or the uh, intrinsic muscles underneath here, and the intrinsic muscles are the muscles within the tongue. So as we can see, we have a side view here, a little bit sagittal view, of the tongue, so we just took it out of this diagram. Now we're looking at it without all the extra muscles around it. And then we can also take a cross section of the tongue. So if you were to take someone's tongue, chop it right in half and be able to look at it. So four different muscles we have, superior longitudinal, vertical, transverse, and inferior longitudinal. On the sagittal, it's not as easy to see, but we do have the superior, which is located here, and then we have our inferior right here. So we'll just mark that as inferior longitudinal. This is superior and longitudinal. But on the cross section is the area which I think really helps you understand a little bit more of the function of these intrinsic muscles and how that helps the tongue move. Because combining the movement of the tongue as a whole and then the movement of the tongue within itself is allowing us to do lots of things, right? Like speak, swallow. So all of those muscles are really important helping with the hypoglossal nerve. So superior longitudinal, this is muscle right here on the top. You can see these striations along the top here. And what this allows is it allows for curling of the tongue upward. And you can see that, right? If you look at the tongue, right? If you're picturing the tongue, if you're looking at the top, and we're seeing all these muscles on top, if this muscle on top was going to contract, it's going to pull the tongue kind of up and up into that cup rounded shape. Then we have the vertical here. The vertical is going to allow the tongue to flatten and broaden. And then we have the transverse, which is going to do the opposite. The transverse is the one that's going here. This is the vertical, which I can put a V here for vertical. This is our transverse. This is our superior longitudinal, and this is our inferior longitudinal. You can see them noted on here. So the transverse is this muscle here. What this is going to allow to do is going to allow to elongate and also narrow the tongue, right? So if we contract, it's going to narrow it. And now we can see the inferior longitudinal is very similar to the superior longitudinal. Across the top is our superior, across the bottom is our inferior, 
and the inferior longitudinal is going to allow it to curl, but it's going to allow it to curl downwards, okay, so down around those edges. So if we look at all this, right, we look at the extrinsic muscles that are allowing the tongue to move up and down, move in and out, and then we have the intrinsic muscles that are allowing to change the shape of the tongue. We can then start thinking about how do we assess a patient's hypoglossal nerve, right? How do we know that the function of the tongue, all of these different things, are intact based upon our assessment? A couple things. First thing we're going to do is inspect. When we have the patient sitting there, we're checking the tongue, we're looking at the gag reflex, right? We're inspecting the mouth. This is the time to also check out the tongue for other things. So when we're inspecting the tongue, we ask them, you know, open your mouth, say, ah. We can look, is the tongue looking symmetrical? Is the tongue looking like there's any atrophy? Is there any fasciculations or movement within the tongue when there shouldn't be? That is going to be the first thing. So just inspecting, looking at the tongue. Does it look symmetrical? Then we can next ask the patient to stick their tongue out, right? Can you push your, put, stick your tongue out for me and then move it right and left, right? And what this is going to allow us to do is, are they able to stick it out and does it deviate anywhere? And then can you move it right and left? Do they have control and does it look symmetrical? Is it able to move the same on both sides? So now we've had the tongue inspected. We've had them stick their tongue out and move it right and left. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're also going to ask them to, we want to check a little bit of strength, right? So what we can do for this is we're going to have the patient put their tongue in cheek, right? When they put their tongue in their cheek, we can press on it and see if it's strong. So it'll look something like this. Put their tongue in their cheek and then we'll press on it. And then the other side. That's going to allow us to see, do they have strength? Is it symmetrical and equal on both sides? Are they able to resist a little bit or is there any type of uh, deviation, something that's different from one side to the other? And then from there, if there's any sort of failure or an inability to complete these assessments, right, then we're going to start thinking what's going on with this patient. Just like all the other videos we've talked about in this cranial nerve series, is there some sort of trauma right? And is there any sort of infection or inflammation or compression on the nerve? Is there something else going on like we're having some type of constriction of blood flow, so we're having an issue with ischemia, that could be a stroke. All of those things are risk factors that we would have to uh, look at. And when we're doing this assessment, we want to make sure that things are symmetrical on the right and the left, right? Because is it the hypoglossal nerve on the right side versus the hypoglossal nerve on the left side? So when the patient sticks their tongue out and there's a deviation, typically the deviation is going to go to the side that is affected. Or if there's atrophy, typically it's on the side that's affected. Okay, Ninja Nerds, that is it. That is the 12th cranial nerve hypoglossal. Hope you got something out of this video. If you did like it, leave a thumbs up and comment down below. And as always, until next time.